Conway in North Wales seems to have more than its fair share of spooky happenings reported inside the town's medieval walls. In fact, during the summer months, visitors can be taken on an evening ghost tour of the town to the various haunted locations where the stories are related to the great delight of all and sundry. The people of Conway are particularly friendly to visitors, and it seems that in general, this attitude also applies to the spectral inhabitants of the town. In 1990, while I was working in Conway, I frequently visited the now sadly closed Hallmark combined antique shop and restaurant. It was there that I met Joe Swan, whose story I've told you in the past, and also a lady who asked me to respect her anonymity and who I will therefore call Madge. She told me her story over a pot of tea on a beautiful August afternoon. Anything less spooky would be difficult to find. Madge lived at the time of her odd experience with her husband and teenage son and daughter in a small terraced cottage on Chapel Street. The backyard had as its boundary the town walls. When her son Mark was 12 and her daughter Tracy was 15, the family began to be bothered by some odd occurrences. Generally, these were the simple, if disturbing, incidents of a loud bang at the back door. At first, Madge's husband Di reacted angrily, believing it was children or idiots throwing rocks from the ruined town walls down into the back garden. However, on each occasion he ran out, he found no sign of stones, people on the wall, nor marks on the paintwork of the door. After this had gone on for several weeks, Di and Madge came to the conclusion that the mysterious noises were produced by nothing more supernatural than one of the hundreds of seagulls which haunt the town colliding with the back door. Then, young Mark told his mother quite casually that he had seen an old woman walking along the first floor landing when no other person but the family were in the house. Madge was a little alarmed by this and told Mark not to mention it again in case it frightened Tracy. About a month after this, about eight o'clock one evening, Di was on his way to meet friends at the pub and the children were out. Madge was reading the paper in a large armchair in the lounge when Di came over to kiss her goodbye. She dropped the paper casually on the floor as she responded to Di's kiss. He asked her, with a teasing twinkle in his eye, if she wanted to go to the pub with him rather than to stay in the house alone with the door-banging ghost. Madge responded jokingly by saying the ghost's company was preferable to Di's any time and laughing he left. When he'd gone, Madge made a cup of tea and sat again in the armchair picking up her paper and continuing to read it. After about an hour, she decided she needed to answer a call of nature and placing her cup and saucer on the flat arm of her chair and once more dropping her now crumpled newspaper on the floor, she stood preparatory to heading for the bathroom. A thunderous bang on the back door made her jump with sudden shock. When her heart resumed its normal beating, she laughingly said aloud, Push up, ghost. I don't believe in you. With that, she went to the lavatory on the first floor and returned to the living room, a trip taking, oh, at most, one minute. As she walked back into the lounge, her heart gave another sickening lurch at what met her eyes. The casually dropped newspaper was now neatly folded and lying on the carpet with the cup and saucer placed carefully in the center of it. But there was a greater surprise to come. All of the ornaments had been removed from the mantelpiece and lined up in order of size along the arms and across the back of her armchair, a task which would have taken easily five minutes if carried out by human hands. 
After taking the scene in, Marge ran from the house in her slippers, screaming for her next door neighbor. The two thoroughly scared women returned to the house to find everything as Marge had described it. They routed Di out of the pub, and after much head scratching while gazing at the new positions of the ornaments, he said very simply, that'll teach you to mock ghosts, especially if they're friendly. Marge told me that she had witnessed no further manifestations in the house and didn't know where the spirit had gone. Well, looking around the mausoleum, perhaps I should try to get it to move in here. I could do with a daily woman, even if it's only here in spirit.